Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. With the beginning of this new One Piece saga, several incredible events are taking place. Events which are going to become more frequent and even more exciting as the story is headed towards its end. In the most recent chapters, we've had several important pieces of information from the universe of One Piece dropped, and this information is going to be really important for the outcome of our story. And some of the information has also been inserted to really catch us up to speed to things that we wondered what happened, but it just happened off screen and hadn't been explained. A good example of this would be the location of Pluton. And since the Alabasta arc, there have been many in the community that have doubted whether this thing even existed, but yet it was still laid as a seed yet to grow. Even in the existence of the sun god Nika was brought in in the Skypea arc. So little by little, we're starting to see these little hints that Oda has given us along the way come into full bloom. Now, with the early leaks of chapter 1060, we've got some much more important information being revealed about the last and remaining ancient weapon because we finally had both Pluton and Poseidon revealed, so there is just Uranus left to discover. In this chapter, we get the amazing revelation about this last and final ancient weapon, and we find out that Uranus is in the hands of a very important character. Plus, in this chapter, we find out how the weapon is used, causing the destruction of an entire kingdom. So in today's video, we're going to go over the early leaks from chapter 1060 of One Piece, all the information that we've gotten so far, and then we'll comment on each piece and see how it may come to play in the chapter. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like or even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out and motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help us out in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or your favorite with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into these leaks. So my friends, as we do with all of our leak videos, please remember that these are just leaks and early ones at that, and we don't have the complete information of the chapter. So as the leaks come out, make sure you stay tuned to the channel because we'll be bringing you more videos with as much detail as possible to keep you informed of what is coming in this latest chapter. Another thing to keep in mind is that these leaks may have different translation errors or are in a different form or order than the official translation that comes out. So these leaks are just a small bit of the information for the full thing that will be released soon. But again, as we learn more, we will be bringing you more videos to keep you up to date on chapter 1060. So friends, as we do with all of our leak videos, before going into depth and explaining what each topic might mean and how it'll be significant in the chapter, we like to list out our topics so that we can then talk about each one in turn. So for this installment, we have nine topics that we're going to cover in these leaks. First, Luffy reveals his dream to his companions and we see their reactions. Second, Sabo continues his call to Dragon. Third, it seems that Sabo is in the kingdom of Lelucia and that he saw a person sitting on the empty throne. Fourth, Imsama appears with a map on which the kingdom of Lelucia is crossed out. Fifth, dark clouds and lightning appear over the actual kingdom of Lelucia. And sixth, an object is seen falling from the sky over the kingdom. Seventh, the kingdom of Lelucia is destroyed. And eighth, at the end of the chapter, the Straw Hat crew find Jewelry Bonnie and their bounty is revealed. And finally, nine, there is no One Piece next week. We are going to have a break. So now that we've covered our list of topics in this chapter, let's take each one and talk a bit more and think about what it might represent and how it's going to be laid out in this chapter. First, we got to start with the revelation of Luffy's dream. Now, we don't know when Luffy had this dream, and it could have been Wano or after he left, or it could have been from the very one that he had in his childhood. And we've seen whenever he tells it to someone, people are stunned. It could even have some relation to Goldie Roger. And speaking of Roger, we don't necessarily know about the connection between Roger's dream and Luffy's potential dream. But it's possible that Roger may have had a very similar idea when he was alive. A dream in which may have guided Roger to some location that would have had a connection to the One Piece treasure. But now, Luffy also seems to have managed to have had the same dream, which may have some connection to Joy Boy, but it's still a little too early for us to know what this dream was that Luffy and Roger both had. But it seems to be something very, very important to the story. Next in the chapter, we have a continuation of the conversation between Sabo and Dragon, and it seems like it might have been quite extensive since Sabo is probably going to recount what happened on Mary Joa. Sabo is also able to explain to Dragon that he was not responsible for taking the life of the King of Balabasta, thus alleviating a lot of stress and worry that Dragon had about Sabo's potential actions. As the conversation continues, Sabo reveals his supposed location. However, it's likely that Sabo knew 
knew he was having his call intercepted. So he might have given the wrong location so that the world government or the Marines might not try to look for him. Now, Sabo says that he's in the kingdom of Lulucia, a place where the world government has total control, which means that Sabo was still very much in danger and would need help to escape from this place. Sabo next reveals in the conversation that he saw a person sitting on the empty throne and referred to Imsam. Now, we don't know if Sabo saw only their silhouette or the body or potentially their full face, because this would be a powerful piece of information for the revolutionaries. Knowing that there is indeed someone sitting on the empty throne means that there is someone controlling the world government, and the other kingdoms have really no control. Now, obviously, Sabo may not know Imsama's identity, but he does know of their existence. And even if the details stop there, this information alone gives the revolutionaries some big advantages. Because as he's passing this information on to his allies, even if the world government manages to intercept the call, it means other people might also also hear this information. But in a way of absolutely confirming that the world government was listening in, it seems that with Sabo revealing his location, they immediately informed Imsama, which caused Imsama to take urgent action regarding Sabo. Because if Sabo knows more information about Imsama's existence, or even about the world government, it could be absolutely devastating. So we see Imsama quickly taking a map in his hand. With this map, Im draws an X over the kingdom of Lelusha, and at the same moment that Im-sama crosses out the map, dark clouds with lightning hover over the country, drastically changing the setting in just a few seconds. Now, there's no information yet if Sabo was witnessing this event, nor if he was still connected with the revolutionaries while this change of climate was taking place. But something unexpected happens. An object, which we don't know its shape or appearance, falls from the sky above this kingdom, causing it to disappear from the map almost instantly instantly, taking the lives of everyone who was in the kingdom, erasing even the existence of this kingdom completely, because not even remnants or damaged pieces or, or ruins of the island are left, which means that this power that Im-sama possesses could in fact be the final ancient weapon we still haven't found. And of course, the only weapon that has never been confirmed or known is, of course, Uranus. Now, in mythology, Uranus was seen as a sky god, similar to what may have happened because we see an unknown object fall from the sky after Imsama crossed this country off the map. We also don't know exactly if the map is Uranus or works as a part of it or if Imsama themselves may be, because after all, Poseidon is a mermaid. That's Shirahoshi. So it's not impossible that Uranus could be a living being because he is considered a deity and Imsama seems to be getting treated the very same way. Now keep in mind that this power has only been revealed to us, the reader, the omnipotent one, but it could have been used for a very long time or even long ago in the God Valley area. Because as we know, a huge event happened on that island where the world nobles were in the middle of a conflict in which Roger and Garp had to team up in order to defeat Rox D. Zebek and his crew. But after this God Valley incident, the whole island disappeared from the map. So this very well means, or could mean, that Imsama used Uranus to erase this island, making sure that nobody ever learned about what happened there not even Garp and Roger's connection. With this power, apparently Imsama can only destroy islands on which he knows its location on a map, which means that he probably is unable to destroy Laftail since this island does not exist on any map and is an extremely hard to find location. With the destruction of Lelouch's kingdom, this could announce that Sabo has lost his life this time for good. However, there's also a possibility that Sabo knew that something like this could happen, and it's for this reason he passed on the wrong information of his location to test something. And if Sabo is still alive, he may even be in a place to witness this incredible event, proving that the world government may possess this great power, making the world government a great world threat if this organization were to ever get out of control. This is a power that could destroy all kingdoms and even all revolutionaries should Imsama discover Cover the location of the Revolutionary Army's base. So Saba would have to be careful that he wasn't passing on any information about his companions to the world government. And finally in this leak, we got the information that Luffy managed to find Jewelry Bond, and apparently she managed to escape from Mary Joie without any problems, and possibly maybe looking for Kuma right now. Because back in Mary Joie, she was shown to be visibly concerned and angered by what the world nobles had been doing to Kuma, which means that Jewelry Bonnie might tell 
tell Luffy about the events in Marijuana, including what happened with Sabo. The story may even go so far to say that he's actually dead, but then managed to save his companion Kuma, which may cause Luffy to be very upset and sad, knowing that his other brother, his other, you know, dreamer, has lost his life allowing Luffy's goal to now be much more focused on the world government because not only is he seeking revenge against individuals, but the whole organization that's allowed this to happen. We also got the information about Jewelry Bonnie's bounty. Now, it doesn't seem like she had any really big achievements while Luffy was on his adventure to defeat Kaido after the time skip, so it may have been that she was trying to stay pretty covert while starting her quest to find Kuma. This one then make Jewelry Bonnie want to act as a spy to infiltrate Marijuana and rescue Kuma. Now, we don't know why she may have just been laying low otherwise, but we do know that she was defeated by Teach and then caught by a Marine and finally escaped. And it was only after that that she was able to resume and start making her way towards freeing Kuma. With all that in mind, Jewelry Bonnie's bounty came out to 320 million berries, which is a pretty high bounty if you think about it, but much lower compared to some of her contemporary supernova. But it's also, you know, that that she may be now the supernova with the lowest bounty. But as our story moves forward, it's possible that Jewelry Bonnie might temporarily team up with the Straw Hats to accomplish some common goal, and this would easily make her bounty get increased by quite a bit. And at the end of this new arc, could see a very different set of numbers for her. But with all that said, what do you think, my friends, about these leaks? What do you think about what happened over the island where Kobe allegedly is? Do you think this weapon is Pluton? Secondly, what other information do do you think Sabo might have got? Do you think he might have seen Imsama or may have seen something else he wasn't supposed to see? And finally, what do you think about this idea that Jewelry Bonnie might meet up with the Straw Hats? I mean, there could be some information that she has about not only what happened in Mary Joie, but while she was infiltrating, she could have picked up some very other handy information. Let us know what you think in the comments below. So as we wrap up this first round of leaks on chapter 1060, I want to thank you all so much for watching the video all the way up to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like or hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. I hope to see you all in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.